Hey guys, Dan here. Uh, this is going to be a quick uh, kit talk uh, video regarding the 135 UC Hardgraph Rambaral Commando set. Uh, specifically the Zaku head that's included with that kit. Um, this is something that's been on my site for a while. I finished it uh, probably midway through 2013 uh, after a bit of work. So it's nothing new, but I thought I wanted to talk about it, maybe give you guys some insight and in some of the things I did on this kit. Um, the UC Hardgraph line is, uh, it seems like it's an offshoot, um, mostly dealing with vehicles and figures and whatnot. Um, it's not a very popular line. And it seems like particularly uh, Bandai doesn't do a lot of reprints of these kits. Uh, for example, midway through this build, um, I needed a replacement part and I quickly found out that uh, I couldn't get a replacement part through Gentai kits. And it seems that, uh, you know, it just so happens that during the build, we were in a, a, a point where uh, Bandai wasn't printing the kit, and even right now, I, I haven't seen a lot of these available on sites. They seem to be sold out in a lot of different places. So, if you are interested in this kit, um, I would definitely recommend uh, waiting for Bandai to do another print run, so you don't wind up paying a scalper's price. Um, I think this kit goes for around thirty to forty dollars, so you know, try not to pay more than that. Anyways. Um, like I said, this is a kit I completed a little while ago. Uh, I did a fairly straightforward build on it with some weathering. Um, I also uh, did a little custom modification here. If I uh, remove the base here, you can see a little toggle switch. And when you toggle it on, there you go. Glowing mono eye. Um, I'll be the first to admit I know nothing about uh, designing circuits, even really basic ones that only include a battery, uh, a switch, and an LED. And um, I even I know even less about properly wiring them to fit within a confined space. But uh, I was able to make this work. And um, if you want to do something similar on this kit, the nice thing about it is you have a very nice large cavity um, that fits behind the eye and uh, the area that's kind of from this point back. Uh, it did take some hollowing out, but I was able to fit um, a coin battery and uh, all the wiring uh, within the, uh, the head. And actually, if I can perhaps zoom this in a little bit further, you can just make out the wires leading up to the LED uh, within the the eye there, which um, you know, I didn't try to hide too much because I think it added a little bit of detail um, inside of the head there, and um, it works within the design. It could be perhaps a little better to scale, but uh, you know, overall I think that works. So uh, outside of the obvious LED modification for this kit, um, it's a pretty standard color scheme um, with a Zaku green um, and almost black for this area down here. Different grays and metallics for the uh, the, the inner frame of the head. And um, I did a weathering wash on this kit, and uh, the way I did it is I applied a little dots of enamel all over the head in different ratios, so I'd use lighter colors on the top and darker colors towards the bottom. And then using a, a brush with um, some enamel thinner on it, I just kind of worked it down from um, from like the center line of the head down to simulate like if rain was hitting the top of the head and running down the uh, the entire dome, it would leave streaks. And that's the, the effect it, it kind of achieved and you can you can kind of see it in the light. Um, the room's lighting isn't the great, greatest right now. But you can see like some streaking and some differences in the color saturation. And uh, the enamel colors I used to achieve this effect were um, Model Master's enamel, tan, white, and I believe a little bit of gray too. So just working together, together kind of makes a, a nice um, murky, muddy kind of wash that you would expect to see on something that sees a lot of um, uh, like outdoor missions or whatnot. Uh, the decals on this kit I also decided to weather. Um, 
for example, the unit number over here is 619, and I used, um, once they were applied and I hit them with the, um, the Mark Softer, I used a, a really fine grit of sandpaper and my hobby knife just to work away uh, the detail, and I'm a little disappointed so much of the 9 came off, that wasn't intentional, but, you know, it does happen. Um, same thing with the, the Xeonic logo here on the power pipe. It's a little weathered. Um, the one on this side even a little more so. And same thing with the, uh, the Xeon logo on the snout. Also, I got, um, this pinup girl um, decal is off of the uh, the DX03 um, Xeon decal set, which I've, I've talked about before and I've had it featured on my blog. Um, as, as I understand it, Bandai is getting ready to reprint these. Uh, this one specifically along with the DX04 uh, Federation set, or maybe it's DX02. But in any case, uh, you can pre-order these. Um, on Gentai kits right now. I think they run about 20 30 bucks. but um, if you do a lot of Xeon mobile suits and you, you want to start incorporating custom decals or maybe you have an ace unit that you really like, this is a really good purchase. Um, there's a ton of stuff on here and um, it's a lot easier to get a hold of than let's say uh, some of the older decal sets like, let's see if I can't find it here real quick. Like this is something I picked off of a fella on Reddit's commerce thread, it's uh, the decal sheet number 17, which is uh, the Xeon decal sheet. And, um, you know, you're going to have a lot harder time picking this guy up here than you will the uh, the DX03 because this has been out of production longer. So, just something to keep in mind. Okay, enough rambling about decals. Um, overall, if I had to, like, give this kit a rating, um, I'd say, you know, if you're, if you're a Xeon fan, if you want to do something different than just doing a mobile suit, this is definitely a kit to, uh, to pick up. Um, it also includes a couple soldier figures and a motorcycle. And to be honest, I'm never going to paint those. And they're still in the box that this came in. But despite that, it's still a really cool set piece for your shelf. It's really different. There's a lot of detail on the inside. Um, all the armor panels uh, of the head come off like I've already taken the top off and you can You can just see like some of the basic detail up here But like the sides will come off the snout will come off the back power pack will come off and It's just really cool really different. There are even some there are four pistons um, around the neck and that, that actually move when you adjust it um, It's really different. It's really interesting um, I know right now there are a couple P Bandai models, um, the the Char Zaku head and the Black Tristar Zaku head that are coming out or have already come out. Um, I know the Char head because it comes with a different kit is like almost is over a hundred dollars typically if you're going to buy it in the U.S. And I've seen some pre-orders for the Black Tristar head, and I think they want about forty fifty dollars for it. So. Um, it's a bit of a tougher sell with those kits uh, because of the, the price hike. Um, and really the only thing that they include different from this guy is um, decals uh, that correspond to those ACE units. And uh, the fact that they actually come with um, commander's antenna. Where this kit, it's just the, uh, the plain uh, Zaku Dome. So... Um, I, I've actually, I'm looking into getting uh, the other Zaku heads. Uh, I know they're not that much different, but um, I really like the look of these. I wish Bandai would do more headsets. Um, the way you see a lot of resin kits uh, that have like 135 or 148 uh, heads. But um, until they do, I think we're going to have to make do with the uh, little uh, tie-in heads that they do with the uh, the magazines and uh, these 135s here. So... Um, Anyways, well, maybe if you guys buy them, uh, maybe Bando will consider uh, doing the line heads. So that would be something cool. Well, anyways, guys, this is Good Guy Dan signing off. Thanks. See ya.